What instantly springs to mind if I say the words non-league football to you? Overweight players, one sad old man and his dog watching a load of blokes hoofing a ball up and down a rubbish strewn pitch with a massive slope? Yeah, okay, hand on heart, us too. But behind all the cheap jokes and stereotypes lies a huge network of clubs of varying sizes and histories, ranging from professional ex-football league setups to groups of volunteers and part-timers. It's hard to overstate just how impressive the depth of the footballing pyramid in England is, with thousands of teams taking part in a multitude of leagues. The fact that seventh tier games can be watched by four figure crowds is something to savour and what makes the game in England so unique. With the cost of going to top level football spiralling out of control in the UK, more and more people are turning towards the lower levels for a fix of live action on a regular basis. Clubs like Dulwich Hamlet, FC United of Manchester, Salford City, Billericay Town and Clapton FC among others are providing a real alternative to the higher echelons of the game in their own different ways. So just what is the appeal of non-league football? Well, as the old saying goes, less is more. There aren't any state-of-the-art 70,000-seater stadiums, which means terraces are still king. You can move freely around the ground, enjoy a drink in view of the pitch, and even have a chat with away fans, as most grounds are unsegregated. And while the teams and players involved aren't as big, that's actually a crucial part of what makes non-league great for a lot of people. Talking to managers, chairmen and staff in the bar after a match, people with day jobs who are just in it for the love of the game adds a real personal touch and connection that you're hard pushed to find higher up in the game. In the non-league game, you actually know your players. If you're a regular and ask them to turn up to your kid's birthday, they probably will. The immediacy and community of the game at lower levels can be intoxicating and a far cry from the disconnect that a lot of supporters of bigger teams feel with their clubs. It could be because of unscrupulous owners, rising ticket prices, TV subscriptions or weird rearranged kickoff times. For many there's a sense that non-league is more pure and closer to the game they fell in love with as kids. But I know what you're going to say, it's affordable because the football is rubbish. You get what you pay for and I don't want to stand on a freezing terrace watching a load of useless cloggers. In a way you'd be right, but in another you couldn't be more wrong. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out that the general quality of football is worse than at the elite level. I know you don't get a medal for pointing that out, but that doesn't mean there aren't any good players at non-league level, far from it. You only have to think of the guys who have accelerated through the leagues in recent years. Jamie Vardy and Charlie Austin instantly spring to mind to realise it's just not true. Gifted ex-top level players like Julio Arca at South Shield seeing out their careers lower down the pyramid. Those who have had injuries disrupt promising starts in the game or youngsters breaking through, you'll find them all in non-league. If you've ever come up against even an average non-league player in a kickabout, you know that they're worlds away from your Sunday league mates. At its core, football without fans is just 22 men chasing a ball around. It's the fans who make it great, and not everyone who dedicates their time and energy to supporting a team wants football served up to them like customers, preferring instead to be a part of a real community. Oh! So here's to you, all the proper home and away fans who stick with their team through thin and thinner in the name of being a part of something and out of a real love for the game because they know non-league football is the greatest thing on earth. <laughs>